video I've wanted to do for a while. So here it is, the 2021 Santa Fe Hybrid. And I titled it right off the top. This is the one to buy. Both the hybrid, this trim level, we'll talk about all of that. So we did a little Instagram poll earlier. I don't know if this is gonna be mirror image or not. Let's just sort of see. This is my uh, how to reach me on Instagram, at Peter Kia Hyundai uh, channel. Uh, we did a little Instagram poll. We said, who would you be ready to buy a hybrid next? A lot of people said yes. Some people said they wanna learn more. So what's going on in this video? In plain language, we're gonna go through what this vehicle is, how it works, and we're gonna talk about the practical stuff and why it's a great vehicle to buy. We're gonna be more in depth than probably anybody on this vehicle. That's what we do here. So we're gonna spend about a half an hour going through that. And if that appeals to you, grab a beverage, grab some snacks. I promise you it'll be worth your while. The time will fly by. Uh, what we do though, is we spend about uh, two minutes, three minutes, just getting into it, allowing our live audience to join us. So if you're watching and you're not live with us, skip to the three minute uh, portion of this video, the three minute mark of this video. And that's what we'll get going on the content. In the meantime, we will talk about uh, just what's going on in the news and I'll show you how to join us live if you wanted to do that. Uh, so what you do is you go to our YouTube channel, it's the Kia Hyundai channel. If you do that exactly at uh, two o'clock on a uh, weekday, you will find, we look basically like this. If you refresh the page, you'll find our live video right there on the home page. You can see it right there today. I'm gonna click into that for a second. We'll watch an ad for Milkbone. Hey, it's a nice little dog, cute little guy. All right, we're gonna skip this ad. Oh, it's just gonna end, there we go. Oh, now we get to watch something else. The news, something here. I don't know what this is. Banking, pollution, don't do that. We're talking about hybrids, all right, there we go. Gonna zoom into that a little bit because those comments that you see all over there, they are gonna be up on that big screen just so I can see them a little clearer when they come in and we'll get to those. All right, so what's going on today? Um, so in the news, guys, You've been talking about the carnival. Uh, we're waiting for the carnival. Uh, talking about this other stuff. Actually, you know what? Forget all that. Let's talk about what we're doing tomorrow. If you've tuned into this for the hybrid, tomorrow we're going to talk about the Kia Nero plug-in hybrid, the top of the line version. So it's another crossover. It's another hybrid, but it's a different kind of hybrid. It's a plug-in hybrid. We're going to talk about that one tomorrow. Uh, we haven't done that vehicle yet, just the same as we haven't done this vehicle yet. So two sort of efficiency geared vehicles uh, today and tomorrow, two o'clock live. I'm gonna have a couple of the little videos up in here between now and then. We got our Stinger with red interior, so I'll try to show you that today or tomorrow, maybe tomorrow at this point, and uh, lots going on. So, have you guys ever had a used Equus in stock? We have, I don't think we have one right now, so we'll see with that. Any inside news on what they are going to announce, when they're gonna announce new Sportage? Uh, no, uh, the reality is the Tucson should be out hopefully this month, within a couple weeks. Uh, we'll have the new Tucson here. Sportage has not been announced, uh, I don't think even globally, and uh, when it's announced for Canada, of course, we'll cover it here as in-depth as anybody. So there we go. We're already at the three-minute mark. Here we go. So just real quickly, if you're tuning in because you're interested in hybrids, maybe a hybrid crossover, today we're talking about the Santa Fe hybrid. Tomorrow, live at 2 o'clock, we're going to talk about the Kia Nero plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, so PHEV. So it's a different style kind of hybrid. Uh, we'll talk about that. But both are crossovers. Uh, both may work for your family. Uh, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. Today, it's all about this car and I'm gonna be really honest. We talk about biases, I love this car. And the fact that I'm not comparing it to another car means it's just so easy for me to gush all over this car. It is great. And yes, I call it a car, I know it's an SUV, so we'll do that. Real quick, before we get started, we got 32 people on live. We're gonna have a whole bunch of people on live. Let's go for 60 likes today, six zeros. So 33, if you all hit it right now, we're already halfway there, and that would really help me out. It's a big favor I ask of people who come visit us. All right, so here we go. I just wanna show you in the uh, webpage here, uh, Hyundai's website is not the same as Kia's. It's tougher to show. So I'm going to show you Brantford Hyundai's website. Brantford Hyundai's website, this exact car, same VIN number, your price, 44087. There's their uh, price that probably includes freight on that uh, page there. So that's what we're looking at as a price point. Uh, we'll talk about power and efficiency and everything else. Uh, we're going to talk about how this works and all that in just one second. Uh, what I do want to point out, though, is... Uh, I forgot. Okay, don't worry. Okay. So let's talk about what a hybrid is uh, in plain language terms. It's a regular car. You get in, you hit the start button, you hit the gas, and you go. Simple. There's no stopping to plug in ever. Uh, so it shouldn't be intimidating for anybody who drives a regular vehicle. It just get in and drive like you would every other time. Uh, what, so what it is is a gasoline engine. There's also an electric motor underneath there, and there's a battery in this car. What that battery does is when you're braking or coasting, it will charge. It will also use a little bit of gasoline motor to charge that battery. 
It sounds very confusing, but what it does is it takes the most, the least efficient parts of driving and it gives them uh, the electric motor either boosting it or even driving by itself. So sometimes the gasoline engine will be completely off and it'll run as an electric vehicle, but just for short spurts at a time, a few hundred meters usually um, at most uh, at a time. Most of the time, you're gonna have the gasoline running like you would normally and the electric motor will assist you. So things like accelerating from a stoplight, instead of revving like crazy, you'll have that little bit extra electric boost. It makes for a very smooth driving car and hybrids as a class are among the most reliable vehicles on you know that you can buy now this is a graphic i made for a video that i've already filmed that i'm going to throw up later but i left it on for this video i think there's very good reason to buy a crossover hybrid instead of an economy car hybrid because i think it will save you more money so let's just start with this for a second if you take your really efficient car and let's just show, talk about mileage this is units of gasoline, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it dollar values. Let's make every one of these rectangles, uh, let's make it $25 worth of fuel. If you take your efficiency vehicle, which is, let's say it's this one, and you change it into a hybrid, and it gets 25% better mileage. And I say 25% because this vehicle gets 25% better mileage. That's the actual stick, window sticker mileage. 25% better mileage than the regular Santa Fe. Uh, so you take this vehicle, gets 25% better mileage. Now, if you replace your efficient car and you get 25% better mileage, you save one thing of fuel. So you still, you still have the three, but you save one there. If you take a less efficient vehicle and you get 25% fuel savings, there's eight squares here, you're gonna save more because you're gonna save two of those squares. So let's call each one of these squares $25 worth of gas. This is what your efficient vehicle uses, $100 for the gas. This is $200 for the gas to go, let's say, the same distance. If you replace your less efficient vehicle with a hybrid and you save 25% of fuel, you're gonna save 50 bucks here, whereas on this car, you'd only save 25 bucks. There is a very, very good reason economically to make sure your least efficient vehicle is a hybrid and allow your less efficient vehicle to be the same. So if you have to choose a hybrid, I think it makes far more sense, money, do dollars and cents, to get your least efficient vehicle into a hybrid like this. And this, of course, being a larger vehicle, you have all the room you need. And we're gonna talk about that right now. So before we go too far, uh, if you're looking to buy these cars, this channel has a heavy EV hybrid PHEV following. If you're looking to buy this car, support the channels that support us. That's Brantford Hyundai and Owen Sound Hyundai. They sell this car right now today. You can get the same car at both dealers. They have provided this vehicle for me today. And let me just zip over. I'm gonna show you what we've got for the key. This is your key. You stick it in your pocket, you never have to pull it out. It does, even though it's a hybrid, have remote start. So hybrid vehicles are efficiency focused. Sometimes they don't have remote start. Right from the factory, there's your remote start button. We can throw it in our pocket. We never have to look at it again, never have to use it again, because as you enter this vehicle, it has a push button start or push button to get in the door. That would unlock all the doors, but they're already unlocked. And we're going to hop in. And this car is really well equipped. I'm gonna call it a car, guys. I know it's an SUV, but that's just what I default to all the time. All right, in here, you've got sort of like a carbon fiber type look here on the dash. It kind of flows right through the doors into the dash there. Coming down to the seat, you have that same echoed carbon fiber look on that piping area there, which is just kind of something you notice in person that you don't see on video very much. Powered seats, power lumbar support, good size seats, very large uh, seats that are nice uh, and comfortable for a larger person or a smaller person. Nice sort of uh, detailing up here at the top. You can see the nice stitching and sort of that uh, quilted pattern there, which is quite nice. And what's kind of cool is when you shut the doors, you can echo that quilted looking pattern here in the uh, speaker grill. So they are kind of dented out on purpose and it just kind of fits the look, fulfills the look, um, does a really good job. Another interesting thing we're going to show you a little bit later when we get in the back seat is this headliner is a little different material. It's not showing up great on camera, but it's nice and soft. It's not like the venue the other day where it had that more hard touch. Um, you know, if you banged it, it's sort of made echoey thing. This is nice soft touch. Uh, so it makes it kind of quiet in here. And we're going to turn the car to the on position now. Because the gasoline engine can start and we are indoors, we're just going to leave it at the on. So you're going to see the engine warning lights uh, turning on there. Uh, that's because it's not actually started. So you have a little bit of a different view here. And um, here's some fuel efficiency, 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers uh, over the past 5.1. Uh, 
Uh, I drove this this morning and reset the fuel efficiency and uh, got 6.2 liters per 100 kilometers driving through town in an SUV, a mid-sized SUV. That was crazy. It was great. So real-world fuel efficiency is definitely there in this vehicle. In the dash, you've got a little bit different thing. So normally you have a tack over here. you got a little gauge down here. That's your battery level. It's never going to be fully empty. It's never going to be fully full. Um, it doesn't really matter when you're driving. You don't have to pay attention to that. It's just something that you might pay attention if you're interested in how it works. The gauge that's gonna move, just like your tachometer moves in a uh, is this one right here. It's gonna sit in that eco, right on that line right there when you're stopped. It's not gonna be doing eco or charge. As you drive, it's gonna pick up the eco. If you floor it, it's gonna go right into power. So you can just keep it in that green section and get the best mileage. It generally does that for you anyways. What's interesting is when you coast, it's gonna come right down here that, and it's gonna go into that charge cycle. That means you're putting energy back into the, um, back into the vehicle without uh, brake or without using any gasoline power. It's just recapturing your energy using the electric motors to charge your battery. It's called regenerative braking. And uh, then you come, when you hit the brakes firmer, you'll see that drop down there. So basically you can see I'm using a little bit of fuel, I'm using a lot of fuel, or I'm charging and using no fuel, which is pretty cool. So when you hit, uh, when you let go of the gas pedal in this car, it coasts for days. But while it's coasting, it also charges. So you can sort of see how much that works and how much, how effective that is. Uh, and then the rest is very simple. You just uh, have a nice, uh, really highly informative uh, display panel here. It's a color display. Uh, this is your all wheel drive system. So of course you can put up to 50% of the power uh, or that it will automatically put up to 50% of your power on the rear wheels. It's a proactive system. Engine temperature, you don't need to worry about there. Tire pressure monitors as well. Uh, all kinds of things in here. There's your driver attention level. There's your um, lane keep assist. There's a lane follow assist as well in this car. We'll go through, and again, lots of screens here. If you just want, there's how, again, there's a visual display of the battery. So about half charge, it'll send arrows of which way things are going. Again, all of this is nerd stuff. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff. That's what you're going to do. You're going to leave it on your speed and you're just going to drive and get great efficiency. So if you care about all the nerd stuff, we'll go into that a little bit later. If not, it's a regular car. There's your speed. Pretend that's your tachometer, even though it's not. And there's your, your speed as well there. And there's your fuel gauge, of course, down in the bottom right corner of your screen. All right, coming across here, we talked about the really nice seating. They're very, very comfortable. You've got a number of things that make you feel very comfortable in this car. Over here, you have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, I can tell you about this. Um, any regenerative braking adjustment? Yeah, I'm going to get to some of that those uh, technical questions. So keep asking some of those questions. We'll get to all of your questions in a second here. I'm just going to go through some of the interior here, and I promise we will answer all of your questions in this video. Great questions coming through. I can see them. All right, so... Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is wireless. Now, the other day my wife and I are in a car, I drive a car with navigation. It also has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Here's the thing, factory nav, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's good, it's useful, it's a little bit clunkier to use than Google Maps or Apple Maps. I like being able to say, take me to the whatever, um, take me to the grocery store, take me to whatever. Uh, so I like using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, I like using Google Maps, and when I do that, I always have to plug in my phone. And if my phone's not where I need it to be plugged in and I'm driving, it's a pain in the butt. So here, you have wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay, which means you can get your text messages, you can do your phone calls, you can take your music. You can also get that wireless mapping brought up here just by activating it through Siri or Google or whatever you wanna do. Uh, so that's super helpful here. And of course, your stereo system here as well also has Sirius XM satellite radio, which I'm a big fan of. I believe, let's just go to the FM. I believe this is HD radio as well. Oh, maybe not. I'm not 100% sure on that. So we've got that. And let's just show you some of the menus in here. Again, if you're a nerd like me, oh, that's not good. So this car, again, anytime we show a, a dealership car, mileage is always high. In other words, mileage is always poor. We show these cars, we um, sit them in parking lots and we do strange things with them that you would never do. And that makes for pure mileage, including running them through the car wash a whole bunch, which in this case, idles through a car wash. But you can see here, you've got a hybrid uh, screen. You can look at your hybrid fuel economy. You can look at all kinds of nerd stuff again here, electric motor use. It'll tell you how much it's been used over the past whatever. Uh, so there's all kinds of nerd information here, but there's also all kinds of non-nerdy information in here like simple things that you get in all of our cars. Uh, you have a blue link system. So if you're a Kia fan, it's like Uvo Intelligence. What does that mean? Well, you can start, remote start the car uh, right from your cell phone. You can locate it. You can make sure your doors are locked. And that's my favorite feature with the uh, blue link system is cars sitting outside. Oh, did I lock the car? 
tap it on your phone and you can make sure it's locked. And I set mine up to get notifications if I didn't lock the car, which is kind of helpful. So that's the Blue Link system there. Uh, you can leave yourself voice memos. Maybe we'll do that for a customer here later today. Uh, quiet mode is a pretty cool uh, system in this car. If you've got kids in the back, uh, two reasons. Let's say you've got young... Oops. I'm oh. having trouble... There we go. My watch is talking to me. If you've got kids in the back of this car um, and you want them to sleep, you can put it on quiet mode. It moves the radio forward and says it volume number seven only, and it eliminates the back speakers. The other really good reason to use that is if you have the um, kids with maybe their ear pods in, something where they're listening to their own music, they don't want to listen to your music anymore, uh, you can still take away the speakers from them, uh, put it up front. So that's pretty helpful here, and it is in this car. Valet mode we'll talk about later. I've done a little bit of research on that, but I don't think I'll address it in this video. It's part of uh, Uvo, Intel or Uvo Intelligence. That's Kia. It's part of the Blue Link system. All right, coming back over here. Uh, so there's your screen there. And then again, one more thing, nice backup camera. If we can show it to you here, we can't. Okay, so we'll show it to you a little bit later uh, simply because uh, it's a push button gear shift and I can't electronically put it in gear unless I start the car. Really clear backup system there. Now, coming down here, this is, some people think it's controversial. First of all, you've got that sort of I call it still carbon fiber type look over here. Uh, maybe it's not carbon fiber type look, but it just, I don't know, you can sort of see the checks there. Uh, I think it looks really sharp. It ties things in and underneath there is a large open space. So, and it goes deeper here. Um, a lot of people say you can put your purse down there. I don't happen to carry a purse. I'm not that kind of person, uh, but whether you're on the driver or passenger side, you have access there. Uh, I kind of like this. I didn't think I would like the push button gear shift. And we were actually talking with some of the people I was talking to today. And, um, yeah, the push button shift you get used to very, very, very quickly. The only thing I find confusing is my electric car has a button exactly like this, uh, which uh, turns on my car and puts it in gear. So my default is to touch that. It's different. But you can see the drive and terrain mode. So again, we're in a hybrid here, but you have controls for snow mode, mud mode, sand mode, and then the drive modes are eco, sport, and smart. Smart is the one I recommend you drive in the most uh, however, do whatever you want. It's up to you, but the smart mode to me makes the most sense. You also have what I like to call rump roasters, heated seats out front here. And of course the heated steering wheel is, whoops, sorry, the heated steering wheel is right over there. Oh, we can look at the rear seat camera. There we go. There's the rear camera. Check out how clear that is. It's very wide angle. It's very, very clear. You've got things like blind spot detection, which gives you rear cross traffic alert. When I'm backing up, people can be notified of me coming about coming in there. So really, really helpful there. Um, I quite like that. Somebody said, what about any recalls? Yes, there was a recall on this car. Here's the thing about recalls, guys. I know that people jump on recalls. There was a recall on this car and it's done. And that means Hyundai is taking care of you before you have any worries. Recalls just don't concern me the same way on a new car. Uh, they just make sure things are good. And uh, to me, anytime a, uh, they're taking care of that or a service action or service campaign, that's a good thing. So um, no big deal. All right, let's put that camera back off. Oops, I hit the back of the uh, thing. There we go. There's the camera back off and we're back. Coming down here again, this panel here is kind of a neat uh, way to do things. It has a cup holder in here. You can bring it up there. Nice soft touch. You saw how clean and sort of damped that is. Again, real luxury feeling. This is really smart. Your USB port is here. Now remember, it is wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so you don't have to plug it in to use it. But if you do use it, you plug it in there and you drop your phone right down here. And that is a great spot right there to have your phone with the wire easily getting there. Got a second cup holder here for a taller cup, shorter cup up here. And of course you've got um, space in here for your um, all your gear. And that's very deep, I should point out here, very deep in the center console. Not to mention again, that lower piece down there. There's a lot of stores there. I'll get a better angle of it when I jump out of the car. Taking a look around the car, passenger can put their phone right over here. That's a rubber uh, padded thing. This car is very soft touch everywhere. Uh, very much of a luxury feel in here. Somebody already noticed, uh, they looked back when I was talking to myself here, and they said, hey, nice panoramic roof, and it really is. These are class-leading roofs in the Sorrento and the Santa Fe, and uh, just big, big glass, great. We'll show you that when we get to the back seat. While we're up here, what if you spill coffee? Um, I don't know, the same if you spill coffee in any other car, you just take out the rubber mats that are in the bottom of the cup holders, and they wipe clean. So, yeah, I don't drink coffee when I drive, so it's good. No wireless phone charging. Interestingly, no. Uh, not on this particular trim level. You can get that on these cars, but not on this trim level. There's your controls up top here. We've got uh, nice lights, and they are the LED lights, which are nice and white in color. 
up there. And again, the roof liner, again, I know it's not showing on the camera that much, but it's a little bit more interesting than some of the basic roof liners. A little bit more eco-friendly look, I guess. You do have three buttons right here, the dots, one dot, two dots, three dots. If you have three garage doors you want to open, whether they're all at your house or maybe if you're like me, I don't have three garage doors at my house, but uh, you can open maybe a friend's garage door if you program your thing to open up their place. Coming down the steering wheel here, somebody asked about regenerative braking paddles. You do not have regenerative braking paddles on this car. You do have um, regular paddle shifters. So you can change gears with this uh, paddle shift system. You have our lane follow assist as well as your smart cruise control. And what that does, smart cruise control, I think most people know what it is. It keeps the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Uh, so you set it for 100 let's just call it 100 kilometers an hour and uh, it will keep uh, the distance between you if somebody comes out in front of you goes 90 it'll just keep back if you hit stop and go traffic um i tend to use smart cruise control all the time to stop and go traffic because the car can come to stop and go and it kind of takes the driving out of your hands which is nice it sounds crazy but it's really nice you can still do it uh, and then the also lane follow and lane keep assist it can steer the car keeping it centered in the lane it really takes the stress out of driving on a uh long trip and makes it easier. There's your lane keeping assist, a little bit different lane follow assist. We'll talk about some of those details if you have questions. As we come up here, a little bit different symbol now in the Sorento and the Santa Fe than we used in some of our other Kia and Hyundai models. You now have this triangle. Oops. I couldn't hear what Siri's talking to me again. You have these uh, triangles now as your lane um, departure warning. And this also has the lane departure, uh, or sorry, blind spot detection, excuse me, blind spot detection with the assist. So it's capable of steering you away from some of those uh, uh, traffic situations like that. Coming back out, we're gonna hop out for a second, turn the car to off, and as we do that, I'll show you that uh, area here. I have a weird sort of camera mount here. Now remember I said you can put your phone in the other area. There is a USB port over there and a 12 volt port here and a lot of space. And that little tab right there is because that rubber pad can be taken out and cleaned out. Is the 2022 Tucson in stock yet? It is not. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go rear seat space. We're gonna go trunk space. We're gonna talk more about hybrid stuff. Uh, if you ask, I will answer as best I can. We're gonna look under the hood because it's a little different, um, but nothing to worry about. Uh, and I'm gonna beg you again, we were trying to go for 60 likes. So do me a favor, if you haven't hit the like button, hit that like button now, we'll keep going. Uh, but right now I'm gonna take your questions. I know there's a couple of them coming in there that I may have missed. Let's talk fuel efficiency for a second. This is my terrible handwriting. That's what it looks like if I send you a love note. Um, it has figures because that's how I send love notes. I don't send love notes with words. I'm just not very good at that. Uh, there's three engines, this, well, two engines in this car, 2.5, 2.5 turbo. Uh, basically the average or the, the fuel efficiency number for highway and city, or sorry, city and highway, you get 10 and 9.9. .9. So the actual, the more powerful engine gets a hair better overall fuel efficiency. So let's look at 10, let's call that equal at 10. 7.4 is what you get in this hybrid, which is where I got my 25% better fuel efficiency number. Now, hybrids are pretty cool. What you can do with a hybrid is it's very easy to what we call hyper mile. A uh, regular gasoline car, you have to drive, you just have to baby it to get great mileage. Um, I had a hybrid for a number of years and you can drive it in a way where if you get good at it, you can really extend your fuel efficiency. And that's kind of fun to do uh, on these cars. Somebody asked, what's the engine size in this? And that's a great question. So uh, the Sonata, the Kia K5, they use a 1.6 liter turbo engine. And that's what this has, but it pairs it with a um, electric motor. And let's just go through the specs real quick here and then I'll keep, continue to take your questions. Where is it here? There we go. So you got the 2.5 liter engine we talked about. It makes 191 horsepower and 181 foot pounds of torque. 2.5 liter turbo engine, which is an absolute rocket ship. 277 horsepower, 311 foot pounds of torque. Tows 3,500 pounds. And then you go to the hybrid. It's a 1.6 liter turbo engine, 44.2 kilowatt electric motor, plus a 1.49 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. 226 and 258. So the torque is higher, the horsepower is higher than the regular four cylinder, uh, but a little bit less. Now, one thing about that uh, electric motor is it gives you really smooth acceleration. Uh, ages ago when hybrids were kind of a newer technology, there was an abrupt transition between electric power and uh, uh, gasoline power when it switches between the two, especially if it's running just on electric and then switches the gas engine on. This car is very, very smooth. You, you, it just, again, it's like driving a normal car. So it's kind of cool. Uh, six speed transmission in this instead of the eight speed transmission in the other vehicles. It doesn't need the extra gears for efficiency. No, it's not a CVT transmission. Good question. It's a eight speed transmission. So when you touch those paddle shifters, or sorry, six speed transmission, when you touch those paddle shifters, you're shifting actual gears, not a CVT. All right, gonna take your questions here for a second and then we'll keep going through. 
Uh, bear with me. If there's something you asked that I didn't answer, you can feel free to ask it again. I'm going to try to do what I can to dig through. There were some good ones in there that I may have missed. I like this SUV for features and not looks. Yeah, you know what? Um, this front end look seems to be controversial to some people. I like it on this car. Uh, what, what's, uh, the other thing that both everybody was looking at here, a lot of people either love the wheels or didn't like it. Here's what I like about the wheels. A lot of hybrids go with this goofy wheel design because it's aerodynamic. Uh, these don't look highly aerodynamic, but I can see there is some aerodynamic principles in there. They look like a truck and I think it looks good. Do I do 50s cars? I don't, but I'd be willing to, sure. Out in the front here, a little bit more of a aluminum style grim, rim or a grill here. Uh, again, this is Hyundai styling. I, it's not offensive to me. I like it quite a bit. I think this just looks, you know, it looks like it's just a solid piece. It looks good to me. Uh, and some people are gonna like it more than others and that's okay. All right, let's keep going down here. Da, 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 da. Keep my phone in the pocket when driving. Okay, that's cool. And I guess you can do that with wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You can keep it in your pocket and never have to do that. Uh, this does not have a wireless charge pad that I saw. The controls look similar to the Palisade. Yes, yeah, somebody mentioned that the piano black, that the uh, sort of that carbon fiber type look that I was pointing out, that they like that better than that piano black. I totally understand that. Piano black may leave some fingerprints. There's no real way to leave fingerprints on this. So that's kind of a nice thing. Um, Okay, what do we got here? Owen Sound, yeah, Owen Sound is a city near, uh, it's north of us, so a uh, town north of us. That's Owen Sound Hyundai. All right, if there's a question I missed, go ahead and ask at the bottom. Sorry if we went over already, but what connections are in the back seat? We're just heading to the back seat now, so that's a good segue. We'll go there right now. All right, back seat, a lot of things going on here that I like. Big opening doors, they open really wide. Uh, soft touch again, everything, so soft touch there. Uh, you've got the window shades here, which, are really good at giving you a little extra shade. If I can do it left-handed, there we go. Um, kind of, you can sort of see a little bit, the camera sort of adapts to this, so it's hard to see. Is the trunk space compromised because of the battery? We're going there right after we go to the rear seat. So great questions there, we'll talk about that. Now, this is a five passenger vehicle. So something like the Sorento, at this price point, you're gonna get, um, captain's chairs here. Here you can stick three people across here. I've got the armrest down now and you can see that seat is a little, maybe a little bit forward but also a little bit upright. So you have the ability to tilt these seats a long, long ways and even though it's only a five passenger uh, vehicle, you can move these seats way up and way back. So this driver's seat was set to where I need it. I could probably move it a hair forward but there's no need to. There's lots of room back here. Let me show you how easy it is to get in. It's sort of a uh, perfect height for me. You've got this huge sunroof above me, so I've got you know tons and tons of space. If this electric panel closes, I'm gonna lose about half an inch of space and I've still got tons of space. So I don't really care who you are. You can get, you can be tall and be comfortable and I can recline this right back with my head on the headrest and basically sleep here. I mean, it's, I'm reclined, it's comfortable and I can put it way forward, make it really uncomfortably upright for cargo space. So this is basically square. If you had a square box in the back, it would be up against these seats. I'm gonna put it somewhere in the middle just for me. And again, I'm pulling down beside me here. Right down here, there's a lever here. So it's not like an awkward spot to reach to make it really comfortable. Uh, I'm gonna put it a little bit further back for me. There we go. Uh, you do have cup holders down here, right beside me here. Let's just take this, put it back up. And you can see, of course, like in almost every one of our crossovers, flat on the seat, good support to the end. Um, and you've got a lot, a lot of leg space here. So knee space, also the pockets here. Somebody was asking about ports. Let's show them that right now. Jumping down here, you've got the vents right here and two USB ports. So front seat passengers have USB ports, rear seat passengers, except for the middle row, or maybe, you know, two of the three, I guess, have USB ports. Most of the time, a car like this, I'm probably gonna have no more than four people in it, maybe different. Uh, so there we go. All right, we're headed to the trunk. Do me a favor, 48 of you are on right now. Do me a favor, hit that like button. We were gonna go for 60 likes today. We need 19 more, it's pretty easy to do. So two USBs in the back. Uh, there we go. Hyundai and Kia and Genesis always put the smile on my face. Mine too, I like it. So um, that's why we do this channel, right? We love these cars. Coming back here, just wanna show you one thing on the door again. Uh, I don't know if I showed it as well as I could have, but this sort of dented door look it just, I know it looks kind of weird on camera, but it looks really kind of unique and interesting on person, in person, and it really ties in the kind of quilted look that they do back here. So we showed the other day the Kona versus the Seltos, the rear seat, or actually the Elantra too, rear seat maybe not quite competitive with the Kia. Right here, you're full up, you know, competitive with just about anybody. There's a sort of the speaker grill and the, see how it sort of ties together, visually kind of looks the same, the speaker grill in the back, kind of cool. 
Looks like there's Seltos Bose speakers. Yeah, a little bit different. The Seltos has, um, the, the speakers in the Seltos are pointy. These ones are more rounded. So let's take a look at trunk space. This is a big question. Is there a compromise with this battery in the back? Now you saw the battery is not a huge battery. It's a lithium dense, uh, energy dense battery, but not a huge battery. So trunk space, what am I losing? Well, first of all, no third row seats in this model. So you're thinking, okay, I'm losing that to batteries. Well, if you like underfloor storage, you've got immense amounts of underfloor storage. So here's the thing. Why is underfloor storage so important? Well, if you're someone like me, you go kayaking, you do something, you get sweaty and stinky or wet or whatever, throw your gear underneath there. Don't leave it underneath there, but throw it underneath there when you travel and you won't smell it in this open kind of design. When I say open design, it's a wagon, right? SUVs are wagons, so it's open. So you can throw a lot of gear underneath there, dirty shoes, running shoes, whatever you want to do. A uh, good place to put them, easy to clean it up and then there. Does it have a sporty exhaust? It does not. It's a hybrid. It's made to sound quiet and that's what it does. Lots of cargo room, looks like four teddies would fit. Well, let's do the teddy bear test. Those of you who don't know what I'm doing right now, I have a teddy bear in a whole bunch of my videos. And the reason is, if I throw a picture of the trunk and I fill your screen with it, whether it's a big vehicle or a small vehicle, you have no idea how big the trunk is. So you can compare in a bunch of our videos how big the trunk is because what I do is I put teddy against the seats. Now you can see, I could have put them several inches forward if I put that seat uh, there. And in fact, let's just do that for a second. This seat is already upright, so it's basically square. Now what we're gonna do is move it forward. The seat can go right up to the front, but it locks in place right there. I'm not quite gonna fit there, but you can sort of see how much space you've got. So what, another probably six or eight inches between Teddy and there. So if you want more uh, space in the rear, you can create quite a bit of space in the rear there. And again, that's, there's a, my hand for reference. Uh, it's not even, it's hard to show you here. I can't even reach that seat at six feet tall, um, touching there. So you've got a ton of trunk space here and a practical five seat, you know, rear bench uh, instead of a third row here. So put them lengthwise, that's a good idea. Put Teddy lengthwise. Teddy's about four and a half, five feet tall, I think. He's not tiny. So now his head's against there. And uh, there you go, his foot's just, barely hanging out. So again, he's a little taller when I hold him up by his head. Uh, but yeah, you've got a ton of space there. So can we get a Santa Fe versus Sorrento live? Uh, yes, we're planning that. We're just trying to match trim levels. Uh, both the stores that I draw from for these videos, uh, we're trying to get a fair comparison. They've got some high-end ones at one store, lower ones at another store. So we just have to make sure. Off topic, but most of the music today. Okay, that's great. Uh, where do the hide the hybrid batteries? Great question. So here is, now I haven't done my full research, to be fair. Uh, I knew that question was gonna be asked and I forgot to look it up. Whoa, that's not the view anybody wants. I thought we were doing it out here. Uh, I knew somebody was gonna ask that and I didn't do my exact research. Um, so if I'm wrong, bear with me. But I believe that's it right there. I think that is the only cargo you lose uh, for that battery and it's just in there. So if there's another area, you guys will let me know. Can you get a third row in the Santa Fe? I believe you can. You cannot get it in this trim line. Uh, this one that we have today. Okay, so let's jump back over here. If you guys have any questions, again, we are, what were we? We were going for 60 likes today, 11 likes away. I'm hoping I've earned your like. We've got a couple minutes over time. If you wanna look at the lighting on this car, I'm willing to show you that. If you wanna look under the hood, I'm willing to show you that. But you'd have to stick around with me. So you guys tell me what you think we should do. Uh, I'm gonna just jump, double check your questions. If I've missed your question, now's a great time to ask it again. Um, I will jump through the questions at the bottom. I'll do my best to see what I can find. Uh, let me just see here. Under the hood is a yes, so we'll do that. Da, 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 da. I think we got a lot of questions. Do you think the Santa Fe plug-in hybrid will ever launch? Uh, personally, I think it will. Uh, I'm not sure when. So there's rumors on the Kia side that the, um, there's rumors on the Kia side that the San, or sorry, the Sorento will come in both uh, hybrid and plug-in hybrid. So we're gonna talk about a plug-in hybrid tomorrow with the Nero, but there's rumors that that's coming and I would assume Hyundai would follow suit here. Um, I don't know, did I show you the drive modes in this car? I think I did, yeah, there we go. Da, 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 da. Where are we? What color is best for this car? Okay, we're asking some weird questions there, my friend. So, there we go. Headlights, okay, so we'll go headlights and taillights. So we'll go a little extra long today. Do me a favor, guys, if you haven't hit that like button, do me a favor, we're gonna go long, but if I earn it, it's worth it. All right, so let me just uh, do lighting first, then we'll go under the hood because I like to keep the, oop, I better not lock Teddy in there or I'll never get him back. Well, I'm looking the wrong way on the camera here. Okay, 
I'm gonna shut this down there. Whoops. That was the license plate rattling. Sometimes people wonder when they make weird noises rattling. Without a license plate in there, you get uh, plasticky sounds instead of a solid sound. All right, turn the car to the on position. Keys in my pocket, hopefully I'm far enough in. Yes, I am. Headlights are on. So, what I love about this car is these LED lights are fantastic. I highly recommend getting LED lights when you can. On your camera, they're looking yellow here and white there. They are all white to me. It's just a brightness thing. For whatever reason, the camera I'm using against this color wall doesn't, uh, doesn't like that. He got timed out. No, it's, it's mad at me because I left the car running with the key in my pocket. So you have daytime running lights up here. Uh, you're going to see some flickering of lights. Anytime an LED is on a camera, it can often flicker. It doesn't flicker for me in real life. But you can see the really bright LED right there and there. They're slightly different aim, which we saw on the wall. And that just really fills out. And that white LED color... Uh, helps you really identify things at night. It makes it easier because not only does it appear brighter to you in person, it also makes it more daylight color, which helps you identify what you see a little bit better. Uh, some cool little detailing in the front here. Uh, this is sort of a, I would call it almost like a brushed aluminum look here. Uh, I, again, I like it. I realize it's not for everybody. Can I show underneath the hood? I will in one second. We're just gonna show the rear lights as well. Uh, signal lights in the mirrors there, just so you know on the other side and rear lights over here. Hyundai's going with this kind of similar look on a lot of their cars. The Elantra has a similar look there. Uh, these may flicker as well, just on camera. They're not gonna flick in flicker in real life, of course. I don't know if I pointed out backup beepers here as well. Let's pop the hood now. We'll come across to the front here and take one last look at the dash. Turn the car off, pop the hood over here. Bear with me for a second, guys. Uh, oh, it does have hood struts. Never mind. I've been under here. Sometimes I have to use two hands, but I do not here. So we'll come over here. We will lift like that. All right, underneath here, gasoline engine right here, four cylinder, 1.6 liter turbo. Now, people are thinking, hey, a 1.6 is a very small engine for this car. First of all, the Sonata and K5 have the same basic engine. Uh, plenty powerful to move those cars around. Uh, K5 is an all-wheel drive vehicle as well. So if you're wondering, hey, it's got extra all-wheel drive stuff, it's plenty powerful to move that around. But now you add electric power in here, and there you get. So clear, uh, anything orange, don't chew on those wires uh, or lick them, uh, but uh, they're always very protected. You can touch anything you want in here. You're not gonna hurt yourself, but there's no real reason to go underneath uh, for yourself, uh, but you do have electric motors right there. Pretty clean, fairly spacious, fairly easy to work on. One of our technicians opened this up and he's like, wow, this is really easy to get to. So that was kind of nice to have. Is there a specific off-road version like the X-Line? There is not, and to be fair, the X-Line's not so much an off-road version as it is a off-road looking version. The tires and wheels on that are still the same profile as the other vehicles. It does have the one inch lift, which is nice, um, but it's no real more off-road than something like this would be. Um, all right, keep taking a peek here. 58 likes, we're two likes away from my 60 goal. There's the only thing you're gonna have to worry about yourself underneath here. That is your um, washer fluid, everything else. Uh, you can sort of let your technicians take care of. But again, let's talk about maintenance with a hybrid. It's a gasoline engine. There's no real excessive maintenance on a uh, hybrid. They are very reliable vehicles uh, as a class. You can look that up pretty much anywhere you want. Um, so it's kind of like no real sacrifice. The only sacrifice I would say is um, the towing capacity at 2,000 pounds. Uh, some of the higher trims, they have that 3,500 pound capacity, which means you can tow a large camping trailer or large uh, tent trailer, normal camping trailer. Something like this, you're limited to a teardrop trailer or a smaller uh, pop-up trailer uh, in this. Can you take any four-wheel drive? You can take any four-wheel drive model off-road. Yeah, you can. Tires and everything else. Uh, this one has train modes. Hey, we got the 60 likes. All right, real quick, I'm just going to double check your questions here. If there's anything I missed, uh, does it have a like the regular cars, did they eliminate the water pump on the pulley? I'm not sure about the water pump. Uh, I didn't check into that technically. Remote starter. Oh, you mean regular starter. Hybrids start a little differently uh, when they restart up. It's not like a regular starter motor. So that's a good question. Um, but that starting and stopping is not something that wears out a starter the same way you would think of in a regular gas car. Uh, so <laughs> Eric showed up just in time to like it. I appreciate that. Okay. So I think we're going to leave it there, guys. Uh, like I said, if you're interested in hybrids, tomorrow we're going to talk about the PHEV Nero, 
We have a top of the line 2021 Nero PHEV, that's the SX model. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow live at two o'clock. So we're gonna go from hybrid to PHEV. Maybe next week we'll hit some electric cars. We've got lots to talk about there as well. And uh, yeah, Teddy needs more respect in the chair. Teddy's had a rough day. <laughs> it does look like I kind of threw him out of the trunk there. I apologize for that. Kilometers between oil change. Uh, best I know is check your owner's manual. It is usually a similar um, to a gasoline vehicle. Uh, so you have to just double check with the owner's manual. It does depend on your region if you're in an extreme climate or differently. So I don't intend to say those on the videos because um, different service departments in different parts of the world will disagree with me uh, for good reason. There's different uh, areas that different, want different things. All right, my camera's about to fail on me here. It's starting to jiggle a little bit. So we're gonna get going here. Uh, will this hybrid be, able, be available in calligraphy trims? The hybrid, I believe, is, let me just double check. Again, I'm trying to memorize all this stuff because we just started doing these Hyundai stuff uh, recently. If you get a hybrid, let's go to trims. I am on trims, no I'm not, there we go, trims. You can get a hybrid on the preferred trim, which is this, uh, sorry, the luxury hybrid. And I don't think on the calligraphy, not on the calligraphy, just, just on the luxury. So there we go. Uh, when will the resizing come? Resizing? Oh, the refresh? I'm not sure. Anyways, we're gonna leave it there, guys. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, like I said, tomorrow we'll do more hybrids and we've gone way over time, so I appreciate it. If you wanna buy this car, support the dealers that support us. Brantford Hyundai and Owen Sound Hyundai have this vehicle available. You can test drive it today. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great day.